Thank you, Dr. Nader, for your nice presentation. Next speaker, uh, Dr. Ahmed Ismail. He will speak about surgical options for release of left renal vein in cases of nutcracker syndrome. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, dear professors and colleagues. Uh, at the start, I would like to thank uh, Prof. Dr. Musat Suleiman for the invitation and the organizing committee. Um, my talk today will be about surgical options for release of left renal vein in cases of nutcracker syndrome. Um, until the um, laptop will be connected, Nutcracker syndrome is the compression of left renal vein uh, if with symptoms. If without symptoms, we call it nutcracker phenomenon. We have, okay. We have different types of nutcracker syndrome. We have anterior nutcracker syndrome. Uh, in which the left renal vein is compressed between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta. Uh, posterior nutcracker syndrome in which the left renal vein is compressed between the aorta and the vertebral bodies. We have also combined type anterior and posterior, we call it duplicate left renal vein or circumaortic. Is the superior mesenteric artery is the only offending structure to compress the left renal vein? The answer is no. We have other structures which can compress over the left renal vein as aberrant ventral right renal artery, compression of left renal vein between the right renal artery and hepatic artery, pancreatic tumors all can compress the left renal vein, paraortic lymph node enlargement, retroperitoneal tumors, overarching testicular artery, aortic aneurysm, and fibrolymphatic band. The last but not the least, we found it nearly in all the cases which I will present. Extensive fibrolymphatic band compressing all the anatomical structures at the aortomesentric angle, posteriorly causing compression over the left renal vein. The main clinical presentation of Nutcracker syndrome is hematuria, left flank pain, left secondary varicocele, pelvic congestion syndrome in females, orthostatic proteinuria, orthostatic intolerance and chronic fatigue syndrome, and complications like left renal vein thrombosis, massive recurrent hematuria necessitating blood transfusion. We can diagnose Nutcracker syndrome by duplex ultrasound, which can measure the aortomesentric angle, especially in slim patients, left renal vein diameter difference before and after compression and pressure gradient between the left renal vein and IVC. CT with contrast can help in the axial view to delineate the ratio measurement and in the lateral view to measure the aortomesentric angle which is normally between 35 degrees and 66 degrees. Below 35 can be diagnosed as not cracker with symptoms, so it's syndrome. Without symptoms, it is a phenomenon. Management options for not cracker syndrome, we can do conservative treatment, endovascular options, or surgical options, which can be achieved either open surgical, laparoscopic, or robotic. Conservative treatment in patients with very minor symptoms or below age of 18 years and can run for six months only if no improvement, so indication of surgery can uh, be achieved. The conservative treatment can be increase the weight of the patient. Sometimes loss of fat can cause ptosis of the kidney and this cause left renal vein hanging and compression. Drug therapy like aspirin or ACE inhibitors Open surgical procedures we can do for nutcracker syndrome as left renal vein bypass, transposition of superior mesenteric artery or left renal vein, gonadocaval bypass, especially of the gonadal vein is sizable, autotransplantation of the left kidney if persistent hematuria after left renal vein transposition, medial nephropexy if the kidney is located little laterally 
causing traction of the left renal vein, we can bring it little medially by medial nephropexy, external renal vein stenting. I'm presenting now some of our cases in Tanta University. We have first case of 35 years old male patient with left loin pain, constant, continuous, and knowing the patient cannot sleep at his left side. He has also left secondary varicocele with microscopic hematuria. CT scan was done showing a wartomycentric angle of 10 degrees, and he was operated upon. We found extensive adhesions at the aortomesentric angle. We released these adhesions. Then the dissection continued till the, this is the left renal vein. We notice the difference in size. Here the congested part, here the compressed part by this structure which is the superior mesenteric artery. We notice the lymphatics around the area. So the decision was to do external support stenting outside the left renal vein using double PTFE ringed 8 millimeter. We sutured ex vivo the posterior wall using 5-0 proline, then introduced this graft surrounding the left renal vein and doing the anterior wall using 5-0 proline and this is the view after encircling the left renal vein to protect it against further compression then we closed the window next case 13 years old male patient presented with left-sided varicocele for two years duration with left loin pain, mud slice CT scan showed a wartomycentric angle of 22 degrees. He was operated and the finding was the same adhesive bands here over the subiromycentric artery pushing it back, compressing the left renal vein between the SMA and the aorta. All bands are released. We dissected the area here. This is the aorta. This is the left renal vein. The expected anatomical site of the uh, superior mesenteric artery is to be here at the site, exactly. But we didn't find it. We proceeded a little bit to the right side. We found that the superior mesenteric artery originating from the right lateral wall of the aorta taking a C-shaped curve compressing the entrance of the left renal vein into the IVC exactly. So the decision was to do resection of the left renal vein from the IVC, closing the rent with lateral venography using 5-0 proline in the IVC, then re-implantation of the left renal vein little down few centimeters from the original position. Next case is 14 years old male patient presented with left loin pain and left testicular pain with varicocele since three years. CT scan done showed the angle is 18 degrees and he was operated and this is the initial finding after accessing the target area. We found extensive adhesions covering the subiromycentric artery. Division of these extensive layers of fibrolymphatic bands. Then, ligation of the testicular vein downward and the suprarenal vein downward to mobilize a little bit the left renal vein. Then we dissected uh, a window here to the after the subiromycentric artery towards the IVC, we found a space little bit in the left renal artery to put a clamp. So the plan was to do complete transection of the left renal vein after clamping, then re-anastomosis in front of the superior mesenteric artery, which was already done here. This is the left renal vein with the new anastomosis and this structure downward is the superior mesenteric artery pushed back by the adhesions. 
Next case is 13 years old male patient presented with left loin pain, left testicular pain with varicocele two years back. The aortomesentric angle measured in this patient was 10 degrees. He was operated upon and we did re-implantation of the IVC, sorry, of the left renal vein into the IVC. We transected the left renal vein and for fear of future stenosis of such anastomosis, we did some slanting and fashioning of the end of the left renal vein before the anastomosis and lateral venotomy in the IVC. Okay. Then making the anastomosis between the left renal vein and the new position in the IVC. Next case, we did the same as a previous case, which is anastomosis of the left renal vein after transection in front of the superior mesenteric artery. And this was the final view. This is the left renal artery passing after the anastomosis in front of the superior mesenteric artery. Last case I'm presenting, 19 years old female patient presented with severe persistent left loin pain, the inability to sleep on her left side, and CT scan done, the aortomesenteric angle was 18 degrees, and she was operated upon, we found the superior mesenteric artery here, surrounded by a tough cuff of fibrolymphatic tissue, we dissected this tissue all around and proceeding dissection anteriorly and posteriorly, then removal of such cuff that surrounds the superior mesenteric artery and we sent it for histopathological examination. And after removal of this cuff, we found that the space between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta become wide, roomy enough and no compression uh, present anymore at the left renal vein. So we decided to do nothing for this patient, just adhesolysis, removal of the cuff, and surprisingly, the result of histopathology came out to be neurofibromatosis. We consulted the oncology, they said nothing to be done. Uh, I'm presenting finally some uh, tips for the sake of time. I, we have two, two cases. I have one more minute. Uh, when to operate in such patients? Presence of complications like secondary varicocele, pelvic congestion syndrome, persistent hematuria leading to anemia or necessitating blood transfusion, persistent lifestyle limiting left loin pain, the patient cannot sleep on his left side, the patient always pointing and catching his left loin. How to approach through midline or left subcostal? The midline is more exploratory, especially if you are expecting any anomalies uh, subcostal incision is more cosmetic with less liability for incisional hernia. To go through lesser sac or retroperitoneal cauterization of the colon. To go through lesser sac is more time consuming due to ligation of the greater momentum, but has direct approach to the left kidney and left renal vein with less retraction to the pancreas. While the cauterization and retroperitoneal approach, you are obliged to do extensive dissection of the pancreas to get it up and retract it all the time of the operation with possible risk of post-operative pancreatitis or at least elevation in serum amylase and lipase. So post-operative protection against pancreatitis should be considered in such patients after the operation by giving them all routinely octreotide therapy, uh, keeping NPO for nearly four to five days post-operatively and close monitoring. Some of them need ICU admission after the operation and the pediatric follow-up in the ICU. To dissect superior zentric artery first or left renal vein first. If you dissect superior zentric artery first, you will lose a lot of time. And may go to spasm or ligate any branches and there is risk of bowel ischemia, while if you 
go directly to the left renal vein and dissect till the aortomesentric angle, I think it's more proper. In conclusion, dear uh, chairpersons and dear professors and colleagues, uh, severity of left renal vein entrapment can range from no symptoms to severe pelvic congestion syndrome. Left renal vein entrapment syndrome should be considered by the managing team, urologist, radiologist, pediatrician, vascular surgeon, in patients with flank pain, intermittent hematuria, without definite kidney pathology. Currently, no clear guidelines for decision making for intervention in nutcracker syndrome. Several surgical approaches have been proposed and the choice of the technique depends on patient's anatomy and uh, the surgeon expertise. Endovascular options are available like left renal vein stenting, gonadal vein embolization, but more tolerable, less invasive, minimally invasive, but the size of stent with the growth of such patients in the future, we, ha we have to consider this. Uh, some part of the stent may be protruding to the IVC if osteal or near osteal uh, compression. In addition, stent migration is high likely to occur if stenting is to be uh, done. So endovascular option need further study. And thank you very much for your attention.